Selling your house is not an easy process. Anyone that tells you it is is full of, well, you know what, or they're lying to you. Selling your house fast and maximizing the value of your house, well, that takes a little work. My dad always told me the five P's of life. Proper planning prevents poor performance. And it's no different when it comes to selling your house. That's why I have identified the six pillars to selling a house quickly and for top dollar. Understand these pillars and you will be able to sell your house faster and for more money with each pillar putting upwards of $10,000 into your pocket. Yes, you could just throw your house on the market and hope for the best, please. But I can assure you that you won't maximize your pricing and minimize the selling hassles. It's important to remember that a person's need does not dictate a property's value. The market dictates that value. In other words, just because you bought the property for X doesn't mean it's worth Y. Or just because you need X in order to buy the next house doesn't mean it's worth Y. These younger buyers will comb through the data. They know the ins and outs of the local market. They are true professional buyers. So how can you ensure that you get the maximum amount of money for your house while selling it in a minimal amount of time and reducing the hassles of the selling process? Well, follow these six pillars and you're gonna be off to an amazing start. Oh, real quick. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Now, the first pillar is selling strategy. Having a strategy, it's important in life, no matter what you're doing. Having a well thought out strategy creates positive results in life, right? Everything from coaching a little league game to help your little one get that championship trophy to selling what is most likely a person's largest asset. People think that selling a house is just as easy as, well, throwing it on the MLS and just sitting back. It's not. That type of thinking is probably why selling a house is ranked as the third most stressful thing a person is going to go through. After death and divorce, of course. So what are some of these important things to think about and thereby strategize first? And most importantly, what is your end goal? Is it to sell your house, take a lifetime of equity and downsize and then live off of the return? Is it to sell the house and upgrade? Is it to sell the house and relocate? All of these different life situations come with different strategies. Will selling the house and paying off any debt and paying the expenses be enough to achieve the goal that you're looking to achieve? Few people really conceptualize that the selling price, it doesn't really matter. It's the net sale proceeds amount that is truly the thing that matters. Do you have a place to go to or will you need to work it into a contingency? And what type of contingency? Because in a seller's market, a home sale contingency is absolutely useless. As few sellers will even be willing to take that risk and a suitable housing clause, well, that's going to end up costing a home seller a lot of buyers and thereby possibly tens of thousands of dollars in a slower market. There is a lot that goes into a successful strategy when selling your house. Don't skip this part or quickly brush it over. In doing so, it will most likely cost you a ton of money, a lot of time, and a result in miserable experience. Now, the second pillar is doing the right upgrade. Wait, there are wrong upgrades? Yes and more so than ever when you've decided to sell your house. Heck, there are certain upgrades that could actually end up costing you a small fortune. I had these clients, they were great people, but they had, let's call it a flair for taste, very contemporary in a traditional New England Cape style house. Now they needed to relocate due to work. They brought me into their house to go over the selling process and during the walkthrough, they brought me to a secondary bathroom and told me about this project that their contractor was starting on in the next week. They loved it. Most buyers, they would hate it. I was out there in the nick of time, ended up saving them $10,000 in a bathroom makeover, plus probably saving them another 10 to $15,000 would have been depreciation. Paint tones, they're another great example. Neutral provides you a return. Personal favorite colors like pinks or oranges, they don't. And then there are examples like roofs, windows, and systems. If you spend a dollar on those as an investment before selling, then I can promise you that you will receive less than that one dollar that you put in when selling. In other words, you're going to actually lose money. And then there's the question about deferred maintenance. We need to choose carefully here. Great example is an exterior of a house that has peeling paint. We probably need to repaint this depending on the condition of the rest of the house. Peeling exterior paint will kill the all-important first impression while also limiting the type of financing a buyer can get and thereby 
limiting the size of the buyer pool that is interested in your house and less demand, well, that equals a smaller sales price. Or maybe painting over an old water stain from a past leak. If a buyer sees that, then they will immediately be turned off and or will deduct the amount bigger than the potential fix from a possible offer price. The third pillar is what I call affordable staging. Let's clarify. In most cases, we're not talking about removing furniture and bringing in new furniture to stage a house. If it's a high-end house or if it's a vacant house, then bringing in furniture, it can make a difference. But in most cases, it's about using what we already have. Removing some of what we have and getting a couple of decent, maybe accent pieces. This is an area where someone can gain a higher return on investment than anything else they do when preparing their house for sale. A home buyer pays for location, space, and brightness. You can't do anything about the location, but you can do a lot in regards to space and brightness. When it comes to space, it's about removing all unnecessary things in a room. Now, it's important to remember that the way we live and the way we sell, they're completely different. And staging, it can cause some issues. A great example, those kids' toys in the corner of the room do not help the house's sellability. But as a father of three young daughters, I can tell you that they are essential to my wife's and my sanity. So we need to be realistic when it comes to staging a house. Family photos should come down. You would be amazed at how bigger a room can feel by removing a chair or removing a dresser in a room. Remove books. For most people, it's about removing a lot of books from the built-in bookshelves. Goodbye refrigerator magnets. It's all easy, small stuff, but add it up, it equals to a lot of extra money in your pocket. Another staging indoor improvement that is a huge difference maker is paint. Again, neutral and bright tones. White walls may be boring, but white will put a lot of green in your pocket. Carpets look tired? Then let's see if we can professionally clean them and bring some life back to them. Is it possible to get hardwood floors refinished? That can be a big one. The important point here is that you don't have to spend a lot of money. Heck, in a lot of situations, you don't need to spend any money. And we even work with a company and a lot of other agents around the country working with companies just like this, where you can actually do the improvements, they'll pay for the improvements, and then you pay them back when you're closing. So not a dollar out of your pocket. Meanwhile, you drastically increase the price of your house. Now, the fourth pillar is the maximum pricing approach. Having been in probably tens of thousands of homes at this point, and having sold more than a thousand houses, I can tell you with certainty that putting the wrong price on a house, it's the kiss of death. Overpricing a property can cost you valuable time in tens, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sounds extreme. Yeah, I know, but it's the truth. The longer that a house sits on the market, then the more potential buyers start to think that, well, there's something wrong with that house. The more they feel the need to actually lowball a seller. You want the most money for your house? Price it correctly from the beginning. And if you overshoot, then be ready to make a quick adjustment. Think two to three weeks here. Now, the real estate market is probably the most efficient marketplace that we have in terms of supply, demand, and pricing. The market is going to tell you quickly what it thinks about your pricing. So how do you ensure that you are priced right? The first thing is that you need to know the market. What are the months of inventory? What is the current amount of total inventory? How about the amount of inventory in your price range? Are there seasonal trends that you need to be aware of? Are we seeing the amount of properties going under agreement increasing, decreasing, or are they staying level? Is the amount of inventory increasing or decreasing? Every answer to those questions leads to a different strategy when it comes to pricing. Most people think that when pricing a house, they just simply look at past comparable comps and call it a day. Don't get me wrong, the past sales are a great way to set a benchmark, but it's the current inventory, or should I say it another way, it's the current competition for your house that will really dictate the price. Are there a bunch of similar houses of yours for sale? And if so, then prepare for longer days on the market and the need for more aggressive pricing. The worst is when people are competing against their builder in a larger neighborhood that's being built out. In other words, they were one of the first houses being built and now they need to resell and they're competing against base two, three, or four. Pricing is an art. It's experience in your consultant and partner that allows for a better artist and a better result. Now, the fifth pillar is that marketing matter. The biggest aspect of your marketing strategy is your price. If you're overpriced, then it really doesn't matter how glitz and glamorous your marketing is. 
it won't be enough to get someone to overpay for your house. But the overall marketing strategy will help ensure that you maximize your sales price. A great example of this is in pictures. Having professional pictures that properly highlight the aspects of the property will result in more views. The more views you have, well, that results in more showings and more interest in your property. It's not just the right pictures, but also knowing what are the wrong pictures. You only want to showcase things that are going to add value to the property, with an exception, which I'm going to get to in a second. But did you know that the second most important thing to a home buyer after pictures is a floor plan? Having a floor plan and even a 3D interactive tour can make a huge difference in a property's marketing exposure. Drone footage to showcase a lot or a location, that could be key. And once you have all of these marketing materials, then be sure to have targeted marketing on Facebook and YouTube, as that can make a huge difference. Back to that exception, oftentimes not showing a picture of a bathroom or kitchen, it can do a lot more harm than good. I get it, the bathroom's old, so you don't show it. Well, when you don't show the kitchen or the bathroom, then the potential buyer just assumes a train wreck and ultimately will most likely assume that it's worse than it is. If pricing is the art, then marketing, well, that's the paint to help make that art. The sixth pillar is the agent selection. I get it. A lot of people don't want to use an agent. They think that they're going to save the commission by not using that agent. I understand the difficulties of this industry and without a doubt, an experienced person guiding you will net you more. An experienced person. I personally would never buy a commercial or industrial property without someone advising me. And I wouldn't buy a property in another state without someone advising me there either. And I am pretty darn knowledgeable when it comes to all matters in regards to real estate. It's just too big of an investment to mess around with. An amount of money in the grand scheme of things, well, it's short money when you talk about what I'm gonna pay somebody. And while a lot of agents will charge the same, not all agents are the same. You will undoubtedly have a better experience working with an experienced agent with a ton of resources than a newer agent that just got their license. There's a reason why 87% of all newly licensed agents are out of the business within two years. And you really don't want to be one of those folks that find out for yourself the reason why they quit. That I can assure you. The partner you choose needs to be experienced. They need to be qualified. Experience matters more than ever when you're talking about what is most likely one of the largest assets that you will ever own. Obviously, if you're here in Massachusetts, then I would love to chat with you, but I'm also able to help anyone and everyone all over the country. I network with hundreds of agents all around the country that are some of the top agents in the country. And I'm happy to make an introduction to you at no cost to you. You can find all my contact details below, or you can reach me by going to youtuberealestateagent.com. Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Let me know if you have any questions and best of luck with your home sale. Until next time.